Good afternoon, people. Watch Women 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day according to Scripture. That's how we're saved. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It's grace that God gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life once you accept Christ as Savior once you believe that he died for you and your sins at the cross his blood was spilled and you are saved not only are you saved but you're sealed until the day of redemption and you rapture ready I gotta hurry up and do this video because it's lightning and uh the clouds look very dark, but I don't know whether you've heard this or not, but this is off of U.S. News. Excuse me. Iran back militia pledges open war with the U.S. following airstrike in Iraq. Listen to what happened. I think Biden then lost whatever was left of his mind. An Iranian-backed militia in Iraq pledged retaliation against the U.S. following Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe Biden's decision to order airstrike late Sunday against his drone bases, a move that has drawn concern from the commander-in-chief's allies at home over a perceived misuse of authority. This is, this is big. Says the militia group known as the Hashad al-Shabai, Claimed four Iraqi fighters died in the strike carried out by American F-16 and uh, two F-15 fighter jets Sunday night. It pledged Monday morning, this morning, in a statement delivered by Iranian state media that it would avenge, avenge the blood of our righteous martyrs and wreak revenge on perpetrators of this heinous crime. It said it would target American aircraft, launch missiles against U.S. bases in Iraq, a threat matching prior acts of aggression in response to the Trump administration's decision to kill Iranian General Qasem Salami in Iraq in early 2020 that brought the U.S. and Iran to the brink of an all-out war. Only this time it's going to happen. The group is a part of the Iraqi militia force known as the Popular Mobilization Units that were instrumental in the ground campaign of the U.S.-led war against the Islamic State group. It stated, it stated it now, will enter in an open war with the American occupation. This, you know what someone said earlier, I should make a t-shirt that said this is huge. This is huge. Or this is serious. This is serious. A Defense Department spokeswoman said the U.S. has not yet completed an assessment of any po uh, potential civilian casualties and declined to respond to the malicious threats. I'll let you think about this because I'm telling you what. With the current dopey administration that we have in office now and these threats... It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby confirmed the attack in a statement Sunday night describing two strikes in Syria and one in Iraq against facilities housing drones used by militias, including Hezbollah, Saeed al Shuhaba, or Hada, something like that, to attack U.S. personnel and facilities in Iraq. Kirby described the attacks as defensive precision airstrikes. As demonstrated in the evenings in this evening's strikes, Sleepy Joe has been cleared to has been clear that he will act to protect US personnel. Given the ongoing series of attacks by Iran backed groups targeting US interests in Iraq, he directed further military action to disrupt and deter such attacks, Kirby said. The United States took necessary, appropriate, and deliberate action designed to limit the risk of escalation, but also to send a clear and un unambiguous deterrent message. That didn't work. 
Sleepy ordered the attack under authorities granted to him by Article 2 of the Constitution allowing the Commander-in-Chief to order military action as a matter of self-defense. It comes as the administration desperately tries to salvage the 2015 nuclear deal brokered by the Obozo administration, which Trump unilaterally left. Regardless of the Pentagon and the White House justification, several members of Congress questioned the legal authority of the strike, including some close allies of Sleepy. I don't know what to say. I have no clue what to say about this. Senator Chris Murphy said in a tense, in a uh, statement that he expected the White House and military leaders to brief senior members of Congress about the strike Monday morning, implying few, if any, senior legislators knew about the attacks in advance. This is awful. It says there is no doubt that sleepy Joe Biden possessed the ability to defend our forces abroad, and I continue to trust inherently the national security instincts of this White House. For real? The Connecticut Democrat, I say no more. He said his concern is that the pace of activity directed at U.S. forces and the repeated retaliatory strikes against Iranian proxy forces are sending starting to look like what would qualify as a pattern of hostilities under the War Powers Act. Hmm, let me think. I got a feeling this was done on purpose. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Both the Constitution and the War Powers Act requires a president to come to Congress for a war declaration under these circumstances. So is this what this is? A declaration of war? The concerns come as Congress has taken an unprecedented step to reign in the sweeping war powers it, uh, it afforded the president in the days after September 11th attack. Those authorities to target al-Qaeda and his supporters have faced criticism over the subsequent two decades, including Obozo's employment of them to wage war in Syria against the Islamic State group, even though the extremist organization divorced itself from al-Qaeda. Some analysis pointed to rise in attacks by Iranian-backed groups against members of the U.S.-led coalition, stressing the need to restore deterrence against Tehran and its proxies. Unless deterrence is restored, U.S. facilities are increasingly likely, Michael Knights and Crispin uh, Smith wrote in an analysis note published by the Washington Institute for Near- East policies. Others, others say the strikes indicate the U.S. appeared to be preparing for protracted presence in Iraq, specifically that the Dopey administration justified the strike through the president's constitutional powers, not the congressional author, author, um, authorizations the legislation the legislator is now reviewing what would bring uh, strikes to an end either the US or Iran capitulates and withdraws or Iraq gains enough control over its sovereignty that such actions by either side become impossible I think he just declared war that's what it sounds like I'm gonna link this article in the description box this is really disturbing so basically what they did, they went over there to do something, and it sounds like they didn't do it. But hundreds of people ended up getting killed. I'm going to link this in the description box. Um, I'm going to watch this. I will be back with the next video. Thank you.